Righto guys, welcome back to another episode of my 79 series cruiser build here at the Bush Company. Now today we start the fun part, the side of things that I really enjoy and that's really rigging the back of the vehicle out for touring, for overlanding and we'll do things a bit differently. Now in the past I've had um, my 80 series vehicles, my single cab cruiser and, and many many other vehicles that I've toured southern Africa and um, sub-Saharan Africa with. Now what I'm trying to do is take what I've known. I've had small compartments with pigeonholes and all the rest and everything went in a specific place. And then I've had big open vehicles where you're just running boxes. And I've got to a stage in my life where I've decided, all right, I'm going to do a bit of both um, and make it easy and practical for my lifestyle at the moment. I've got two young kids, so it's a case of building it suited for the family as well. So not just a touring specific focus, but a general, take the kids to the beach, load some bicycles in the back, a few things like that. So I'm gonna go through how I start up a build and the process behind it. And this is gonna be more of a custom job than um, just buying off the shelf products and sticking it in. Now, what we basically, what I start with is what I wanna try and get into the vehicle and what I'm trying to achieve with the vehicle. So what I have here are some of the items going in the back that I need to accommodate space for and try and do my design around and my thing, you know, my thinking around those products. So um, I want to run a deck jet wash system of water tanks. The biggest thing for me is water. And I can't spec this up enough or really emphasize it enough. Water for me is massive. Um, in the case where I'd rather have too many tanks that you can always drain water on to relieve weight if need be. But if you guys want to make your family happy, especially if, um, you know, in the sense, I find anyway with, with, with my family, if I've got water, if we can have a shower in the evening, wash the kids down when they've been playing in the mud, um, my wife can at least wash her hair every third day, things like that really make a difference. Now, we are also very basic campers, so I'm more than willing to take a kettle and boil up some water and, and wash out of a bucket. All right, I don't have to go to the extreme of um, having hot water systems and coffee machines and all the rest. We are very, very simple campers, and um, my family's all simple campers, which is fantastic. But water is the one thing that I suspect to guys that make sure you've got enough fresh or clean water. So, what the plan is, is other than the water tanks, is I've chosen to go with a boat deck wash system. Now, this is a water pump, but it's got a high pressure pump on it, and that's gonna be great. One, for hosing down the kids when they are full of mud and been playing the whole day. Um, just on the beach, wanna get rid of the beach sand off your feet, or have a shower, get rid of the fresh, um, you know, get rid of the salt water. A deck wash pump is the way to go, in my opinion. I've got one on my boat, I think it's such a handy thing, and I've never tried one in a four wheel drive, so I'm gonna try this for the first time in this vehicle. I have got another smaller pump gonna go in for our drinking water tank, and I'll discuss that next. Other than that, I'm going with a big DCS lithium battery system. Now, this battery isn't as light as a lithium battery as you would have thought. Um, so a lot of the times you get a lithium battery that's extremely light, and you find batteries running prismatic cells will be slightly lighter or a lot lighter than this. This bad boy is up there in, in weight at cylindrical cell design. There's a reason why I've chosen this, and I'll go into the electric circuitry in another episode because there's quite a lot to discuss about electronics. Um, but for me, this one takes the boss. I've got 200 amp hours of usable energy. So that would be the equivalent of about 400 amp hours of AGM deep cycle batteries. So that is already saving me a lot of weight if comparing it to AGMs. But um, being a nice slimline design as well, this battery is the one that I've chosen for to run um, up to two fridges in the back for a long time. Now, other than that, compressors. Now, what I find is a big thing with compressors is you can run one compressor. There's nothing wrong with a single compressor and you can pump all your tires and you can take your time. Doing a lot of fishing and being on the beach on a Sunday fairly often with the family, you know, we head out there Saturday, Sunday, air down my tires. I wanna air up as quick as I can without having to go to a fuel station or a server or a garage, as some people would say. So I'm running, um, not just one compressor, but I've actually got three compressors I'm putting in. Now, why have I gone with three? It's super extreme and it's not needed. I understand that, but I'm a big body. I wanna pump my tires quickly, not just on the vehicle, but on the boat trailer, double axle trailer, double axle caravans, on a toy hauler, whatever I might be towing behind me, I wanna pump up air. Now, instead of taking place of a tank, 
you can have one compressor filling up an air tank. Um, the, the upside is that you can push it on while you're driving before you get off the beach. Fills the air tank. But the reality is that on a normal size, well, I'd say normal size air tank, pretty much that size air tank, like a fire extinguisher, um, you are only pumping up one tire. Once that one tire of air is pumped and it'll force it in really quickly, um, then you're still relying on your one compressor, whether it be a single or a double cylinder compressor, um, you're really relying on that one compressor's air flow rate to pump the rest of your tires. So you're only achieving one tire up front and the rest is a slower rate. So I decided, you know what, instead of that space of a big air tank, I'm gonna put in three single cylinder um, air compressors. One, I'm building in redundancy. If one packs up, I've got another one spare or another two spare. But in the same space as a tank system, I can fit in three of these bad boys, getting triple the flow. And to me, this makes a lot of sense. But definitely, it's overboard, and I know that, but it's cool, and I'm gonna love doing it. So these are from Airbag Man. Um, Airbag Man are, have been renowned in the industry for doing the um, air suspension as well, or the um, you know, the, the loaded suspension that if your suspension is sagging or you hook a big trailer behind you, you can pump up the airbags and they pump it up. So I've gone with three airbag man compressors and I can even run those later on to some airbag man um, airbags in the back of my car if I want to go that route. Now, getting off some of the stuff that I have and some of the products that I have here, let me just move it out the way. And the next stage, which is something to always consider, just replace it there. The next thing to consider is where the products are going. All right, so my biggest thing is, instead of having a drawer system, I wanna go with our Pioneer boxes. Now, why I like the Pioneer boxes is they are stackable, they um, hold firmly together, and they're really, really tough and robust. One, I can put that down on the ground, use it to stand on, or my kids can sit on that as a seat so I don't have to take spare camping chairs with us. The other thing is with two of those stacked or three of those stacked on either side, you can make a table out of them as well, which is also really easy. But the biggest thing is I can take the container in the house or my wife can take it in the house. We can pack the food for the trip in here or in two or three of these containers and easily walk them from the house and put them in the back of the vehicle ready for the trip. So we can pre-pack in the weekday and be ready for the weekend like this, jump in the car and, and hit the road. So I'm gonna go with this route. Also, if I take them out, I've got a big void at the back. So if I do go to the shops and I wanna go buy some tools or something like that, or um, whatever it might be, fertilizer, bags of compost for the, for the garden, I've got a big storage void down below where I can put the products in without having these in, being an all round purpose. So that's the choice on these. Now, luckily with this Land Cruiser setup, the first time I've actually got height on a vehicle. So the plan is, is I'm gonna be able to stack two of those there, have two next to that over there. All right, so that's four, plus go double the depth. Another two and another four. So I'm gonna be able to get eight of these Pioneer boxes in. If I remove four out one side, I'll be able to add one of my fridges underneath there and still have four usable ammo boxes on this side or Pioneer boxes on this side. So definitely gonna work really, really well for that. So how the process goes and the thinking goes, I always start with a base. So instead of bolting and drilling multiple holes and tie down points into the tub, I'm gonna put down a bit of plywood down the bottom. I'm gonna go with plywood that is pretty slippery and that works really well. So that's gonna form my whole base and I'm gonna basically take up a cardboard template mock up the sizing and the spacing that I need and start with a base plank. Then the goal is to come up with a few cross members and a few uprights just to support the, the top floor. And then at this height over here, just above these, I'm gonna put in a big floor all the way through. Now, I want my weight down the bottom. So the goal is to measure up and get some custom um, polyethylene tanks made up. And that's gonna be in that back corner so I wanna get some water in the back. I'm gonna get my battery in the back, right up against the cab, or so I'll show you in the front up against the cab, and that's gonna put the weight of my heaviest products over the axle. So I've got less 
cantilevering weight or less weight behind the axle. So those are going to go up there. Now I'll just basically show you as well is popping the side here. There's a huge amount of height on this vehicle. Um, and the nice thing about it is that even if I have a floor at this level, I've still got almost 600 millimeters of space of top deck. Huge storage space, big flat surface. I'm gonna be able to put in bicycles and a few other things in the side. Now, bearing in mind, I'm still gonna get in fridge in. I'm still gonna get my kitchen and pantry set up in. And that's probably gonna be all in the left-hand side of the vehicle or um, the passenger side of the vehicle here in Australia. Compressors, really nice and small. I can tuck these guys away. So I've got these big spaces on top of the wheel arch. And my thinking is so far is I'm gonna go compressor, one, two, three compressors in around row on the wheel arch and still fit my high pressure water pump in the space. So utilizing as much of the space possible, not wasting any storage space. So that's the plan. Guys, stay tuned. This is gonna be a longer episode than normal because there's a lot of stuff going into it. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys learn some cool things. And the biggest thing is that you can do a lot of this yourself. So if you have a bit of an idea about how to work with wood, some screws, some wood glue, and you have a few basic tools like um, you know jigsaw cutters or saws or bench saws, you can probably build this whole system yourself at home. And that's what's gonna be nice about it. And I've decided to go that route just to make it more my own and customizable. So stay tuned. This is um, at least a day later. Now, basically what we've got is, um, and the products that I chose was on the floor, this is what we call form ply in Australia. Um, I'm also learning these things that I haven't really worked with much timber in Aussie before. So form ply has got a very smooth surface on it. And I saw a friend of mine had this who's, a, um, who's an aircon mechanic and he slides his toolboxes and so on in there. So the theory is that the form ply on the bottom, it's super heavy and super dense, but I'll be able to bolt that straight through the floor there. Now, I'll just grab, uh, grab one of the boxes. So the Pioneer boxes, as you can see, yeah, Pioneer boxes, heap of space to slide in. And um, actually, no, they do go that way. There we go. So Pioneer boxes will be able to slide in like that quite easy um, and go to the back. Now, this central section was just a light ply. Now, we're trying to save a bit of weight. So the central boxes on there. This is the first carcass structure. After this, we're going to give it a coat of paint just to make it all black and make it look nice. But keeping the form ply raw. Now, there's a few things which I've figured out over time, which is really nice, is your edges, whether it be the bottom edge, or whether it be the top edge, is reinforce it with a bit of aluminum angle iron, for example, so that when you load a product in, you're not gonna be chipping the wood. So I'm gonna have angle iron down here, and angle iron on the top decked area as well. All these big holes are nothing more than saving weight, okay? Um, literally grab a jigsaw and a router, and you can router them all out, make it neat, and um, just saving weight. Now, as far as measurements go, the next biggest thing was to determine space to get my battery in and out. So if you have a look at the back, I'll point there with the tape, this hole over there and that measurement in there is the exact size to get my battery, my DCS battery, yep, in there and straight through there, basically, giving myself an entry point and an exit point for my battery. Once the top deck is on, there's no ways I'm gonna be able to get in there to lift out that battery. So that battery will slide right in and right to the back and we'll be able to bolt it in there. I've got a huge amount of space in the back. Now, measuring it up and coming up nice and high, I've managed to get two water tanks. We're gonna be putting two water tanks in and I'll go through it later when they arrive. I've ordered them, so it'll we'll probably be another couple of weeks away before they arrive. But, um, but let's see, see how we go with that. Basically, we're getting close to 200 liters of water. Now, most guys would say, oh, you're crazy. That's a lot of water. But one thing you gotta understand is, even if I'm spending four days on the beach, one, I don't have to fill my water tanks. So if I'm doing a big overlanding trip, I don't have to. Two, it's always good to have spare water. And if your vehicle can carry the weight, and you've got it specced up to carry the weight and you can handle it, well, I'm well within my weight carrying capacity on this vehicle with its four ton GVM upgrade. So 200 liters of water, that's gonna be there. If I've got the boat and I've been in the salt water for a few days, I can even rinse my engines and flush my engines out with the water in here. Now I've gone with two tanks. I'm gonna be putting in a 50 liter tank as well as a 150 liter tank. 
The concept is the 50 liter tank is my fresh water. Let's call it drinking water. I can cook with it, I can drink with it, I can fill up the kids' water bottles with it. That is not to be used for anything else. The second tank being the big tank, the 150 liter tank, that I will call my fresh slash dirtier water. So if I'm at a creek or a river and I want to top up a tank, I'm going to only be topping up the 150 liter secondary tank, not the 50 liter one. So that is going to be my tank for showering, for washing up pots and pans, for rinsing the boat down, for flushing out the motors, for washing the kids down, doesn't make a difference. That tank is my usable water and I've gone with a bigger tank there because I'm gonna use that first and use it quicker. So I'll get rid of that water pretty quick and I can top it up at a creek and I don't have to go every single day to the creek to top it up. I can literally go there once a week, fill it up with 150 liters. So two water tanks, battery, Four ammo boxes going in these gaps. Now, the other thing to notice is how to bolt it down and how to screw down these to that, okay? Is ta basically taped it out where running the angle iron. So the, I've just gone with one point, um, oh, sorry, with three millimeter thick angle iron, a 30 by 30 angle iron in the bottom there. And that is a receiver that's coming up and I'll be able to bolt in there with little pan head bolts and recess it and countersink them into the actual wood. Um, so it's gonna be nice, flush, smooth edge with three angle irons holding this whole thing together. So I don't have to glue it into place. Now, the next step is yes, getting the top on, but before we get the top on, I need to get those back sections made for where the compressor and the water pump's going. And on this section over here, we're gonna be, oh, excuse me, got a bit of dust in my nose. On this section over here, we're gonna be putting in a box, a concealed box, and that's actually gonna be my gun case. And we'll go through that later. That's gonna um, accommodate at least two rifles or two shotguns minimum, as well as my fishing box. I can put in my two-piece fishing rods and my fancy or expensive, I'm not gonna say fancy, but my reels that I really wanna keep safe, lockable out of the way. So a lockable gun case running down the right-hand side is gonna suit us, and yeah, stay tuned. We're a lot still to knock out. This process is not gonna be quick. This whole job will probably end up taking the best part of a week to get done. So um, yeah, we're gonna carry on with it. Stay tuned. Righto guys, so this is an update. Um, just give you time to scale. This job is taken at least three days so far. Um, it is a lot of work and marking out the timber takes time, cutting it and so on. But give you an update. Previously we had the carcass in there, now carcass is in, but we've actually sprayed it and sealed it. Now, I've gone to my local big hardware store at Bunnings and bought this Bully rubber liner. So it's got a bit of a rubber compound in it. It's really nice at just finishing products off, making it black, making it look nice. And it also gives it that waterproof layer. Being the lighter plywood, wanted to get a bit of a waterproof layer on that as, you know, in the back, who knows what gets wet if you've got a, spare, a you know, swimming costume or something. Um, you're gonna throw in there, it's wet, kids towels, beach towels. I do a lot of beach work, so keep it nice and dry and just cover it with that. So, so far what's been done is that's all cut, painted up. Also, on this side, the whole length, and you can see the back panel over there, is the gun box or the fishing rod storage box is now complete. So, box that in, frame that up, and that's mounted directly above the wheel arch. So it's resting on the wheel arch, and I've bolted it through the side of the main frame as well. The whole floor is now bolted down. And you can see on this edge here, we've actually routed out and recessed in an aluminium strip. So when it comes to loading my ammo boxes in like this, it's very, very, very easy to take an ammo box in and pick it up and push it in that slot now. That aluminium edge is protecting it and protecting the wood. So a really handy idea is just to have something hard to slide over there. Then with getting everything in now, I'm trying to figure out what goes where. So I've managed to find a spot for my big kinetic rope. It's a Bush Company kinetic rope. And this is my most used recovery device so or product. So I find that whenever someone needs a tow out on the beach, this is heavy duty enough to pull out a vehicle with a boat or a vehicle with a caravan that they're in tow or towing as well. So gonna make that quick and easy and it'll be able to shove just underneath the gun case, which is really quick and easy to get to. Um, as far as the battery goes, now we slid the battery right down the side and we made that hatch big enough that we can actually get the battery in and out quite easily throughout the back. That has been bolted with a custom bracket. I've used 10 millimeter flat bar and made a bracket that bolts into the gun case. So everything starts tying into each other and is all bolted through the tub and tying into the bottom base, which is the main frame and structure. 
Now the 200 amp hour lithium DCS batteries in there. Um, next I'll start running all the cabling and wiring. And my biggest goal is, is to try and make everything concealed in this vehicle and things that we don't need to see is hide away and tuck away but still have access to it. So what I'm gonna have is I've taken a bit of off cut of the ply, um, made a little aluminum angle iron like that. Now that's gonna get bolted to the side of the gun case again so freestanding from the battery, but it's gonna rest on top of the battery between the termination points. That is then gonna receive my 12 gang fuse box so that I've got basically one positive feed coming in uh, to that and then I'll be able to run all my wiring off of this. And then this is my shunt. Now a shunt is something that measures resistance, um, basically so you get your load takes and sensors or for your monitoring system. I'll go into more depth on the battery and the monitoring systems that I'm using later on, but effectively the battery shunt is gonna go into there, and that's gonna go in there nice and neatly with all my fuses in one spot, be bolted on the battery underneath the deck. Um, I am still running main fuses into these, so if there's a major problem, I'll still be able to fuse off the battery and the main in feeds, which is the main thing. So that'll be nice and neat and tucked away. That's gonna go lie on top of the battery next. So come around to the side and I'll show you what we've done with the compressors. Compressors um, were mounted to a piece of ply again. So everything is getting mounted to plywood. Now, yes, it is heavy and it adds a lot of weight, but it's so easy to work with. You kind of can't stop. So I've got my three compressors, my three airbag main compressors mounted together. And on top of the compressors, I've tied in a flat bar running every single individual compressor fused. So if one blows, I've still got the other two working or, or vice versa, as well as the relays for the switches are also mounted on top there. Nice and neat. Now I've taken the compressor lines, which are the braided ducted lines there. The braided lines are running into one solid little bank that I found from my local tool shop, which is the compressor supplies. So I've got three supplies in. That's going to a little pressure switch. Now, if it over pressurizes, it switches off. So I've got my pressure switch and then my outlet. Now my outlet will still run all the way to the back of the vehicle. Probably at this stage, we're thinking the back of the vehicle where I can clip it into, but that's all nice and neat. Giving myself plenty of space on this side over here for my fillers for my water tanks. My water tanks are not here yet, they're two big water tanks. So I need the filler pipes in for that. Um, so leaving enough space left it all accessible to the filters as well so i can unscrew the air compressor filters to change the filter elements out when need be and on the right and against this back panel here i've hard mounted up the high pressure deck wash pump so that's nice and out of the way it's also got its gravel filter on it so picking up all the fines that are coming into there um, that's going to get plumbed and also go out this right hand panel so um well on my right now this panel over here is going to house hose my hold my hoses for my jet wash as well as my airline hoses everything's going to be ducted out the back end there so that's the progress report so far on how we're going next step is to get the top marked out and i need to make access points into the uh, so i want to be able to access my battery is very important in case there's a fire or i need to change something the battery so access my battery open this up so i can access this i'm also going to make this a breathable vented section so that um, when I am producing a lot of heat of three compressors, it can actually vent out. On the top here, the stand-up fridge is gonna come in next. So stand-up fridge, cutlery, pantries, all on this side of the vehicle. And that's gonna get mounted on once we've got the flat deck. So next step, flat deck, and we go from there. Stay tuned, there's still a lot happening with this. And there will be a lot more information on my 12 volt setup and why I've chosen that specific setup later on. We are now at day five of the rear fit out now this takes time especially when you're doing a lot of custom work and you're working with the timber you have to measure literally five times cut once and then a few mistakes get made along the way and i'm still trying to figure things out as i go along so um a lot has happened since the last uh last little intro but let's basically run you through on the top end so we've got the top shelf if you want to call it actually put in the top floor is now put in i've run this really nice marine grade carpet on it and the carpeting there's a few things i really like about carpeting one is that it gives us a really neat finish it wears nicely so for the amount of time we actually use being not a work vehicle but a holiday touring vehicle it wears well you can vacuum it out pretty easily um, and then it also provides a little bit of grip 
So when I do go and put in a large cooler box on the inside or something heavy on the top end, it does stop it from sliding around a bit, which is nice. Now, on this side over here and hidden away, and I'll just shoot around the side here, hidden, hidden away over here, I've got this little infill panel. Now for these, a really simple way on how to work with the wood and so on is literally a little seat belt webbing. Like literally get a scrap yard if you want to grab some seat belt webbing. And that's just a tab, so when you do put things on it, it's just soft. That allows you to pull it out. Now, in this section here, I have got my lithium battery, which we can see from the back. But what I've done on the top end is a little panel with my fuses. So all my fuse box and panels are in neatly over there. Um, it's tucked away, I can easily get to it, and as long as there's enough fusing and fusible links going in, so I've got fuses running from the front of the engine bay coming into the main feed, I've got fuses on every single point running out, as well as a fuse, whole fuse box for all my light circuitry, power outlets and so on, is it's extremely safe in the back. So that's gonna be in this area over here. Um, so nicely tucked away, you can't even see it when it's actually in there. So that's all done and neat out the way. Now, as far as the gun box goes, so um, I've got two lockable locks in there. That's just barrel locks I bought from my local hardware store. Put in two barrel locks there and that's hinged with a piano hinge. So literally that can open up that easily. Massive storage, gonna get all the rifles I want in there or fishing rods and reels. So really good, safe, dry, lockable storage. Um, just nicely cut out. The reason why it's cut to the shape as well is I've got my main power cables coming into the tub through a big waterproof gland, and that's coming into this front corner. Now, um, that's that section there. Now, coming onto the back is, one thing you try and do, or I've learned from when I'm building up canopies and building up touring vehicles, is you can go and pigeonhole every single thing off and make everything in its specific spot. But the reality is it's really impractical for bulk goods. So I wanted a very big open cavernous space where I can throw the kids' bicycles in, load in the wetsuits or the diving cylinders, you name it. I can actually just throw things in the top end and it's out the way. Being this storage underneath here is for my ammo boxes um, or my Pioneer boxes storage, as well as this section being a fridge, which could pull out if I wanted to have the fridge in there instead of the storage Pioneer boxes. Now, my most go-to recovery gear is my kinetic rope. So that's, I've managed to tuck away in the side here Right, so for the rest of it, the one thing I found as well um, with storage solutions is I wanted a big cavernous space. So I've had vehicles before where I built little holes or little pigeon holes for every single little item. And what I find is it's extremely restrictive where you just change your style. Like instead of doing, um, you know, bush touring, you might go to the beach and you want to take the kids' bicycles with or have some extra space for the diving cylinders and spearing gear and, and, and life jackets and so on, or, or you know, wetsuits. So I wanted a big cavernous space on top and basically have my fixed storage spots down below. So having those two, I can take two Pioneer boxes um, on top of each other and I can get them in easy, simply by sliding it in. Now, instead of having a drawer system, one, this cuts out a huge amount of weight um, two, it's simple. I can take this, grab these. Now this fits too deep as well. So it's too high as well as too deep. So if I pull these apart and they're stackable, um, you can go too deep like that. And you can see there on that aluminum edge, just catching the boxes as you're running it. So it's protecting that wooden base. So those can go in there. I can just grab that out and I go in the house. Now these two both take the same. So I can take up to eight of these um, Pioneer boxes in here or I can take, remove the four out on a certain trip, add in a second fridge or freezer on like a long trip, and then these boxes, I've got so much space on the top that they can get strapped down against the headboard in the back of the canopy. So it's giving me the versatility to have two different options within these spaces. Even a big ice box or a cooler box would fit in there very nicely, probably about a 70 liter. Um, then this side over here, I've got Decent amount of storage, that's all done in, and I've put a little shelf in there with this hose. Now, one thing too that I've also found is having the access to certain things you use fairly often without opening all the doors. All right, so when the back of the tailgate's closed, and what I've done with this one is I'll just show you there, so nice and tight still, there we go. So getting from the back door, I can open up just the back door, 
And let's say I want to hose down my feet. I've just been in the beach sand, and the kids especially. I can grab my deck wash hose, pull it out there by just having the one door open, and I can spray the feet down or your legs down if you want to then go in. Or even when I take the dog to the beach, I can hose the dog down before he goes into the back seat. Now, that's so easy, um, so easy in there. The other thing which I want really access to is what I found is a table. Now a table is probably the last thing I pack away in a campsite. There's always a loose water bottle or um, my wife's handbag or a set of binoculars or a camera or a drone or something sitting on a table. So the table's gonna come in here. And the other thing I use a lot on my vehicle, especially because I've got the rooftop tent, is, is the, the, the ladder. Now the ladder has got a fixed spot. So that's just in there. And I can get to that without having the tailgate open being so easy to push in the canopy door closed that keeps it locked away i don't have to fuss with a bag or try and get it in my tent or store it somewhere else so i wanted a fixed ladder position and i'm going to add on a fixed table position on this end the whole back of the box is still getting carpeted right through the whole thing so having the same finish and on this panel yeah this is my power panel display section so um, i'll just grab the little monitor quickly so i've gone with a Cy marine monitoring system and it's a marine monitoring system and that's not the right one this is a jet so the Sar marine module comes with a few pieces uh, one is the shunt which is the electronic resistor basically or it measures the resistance between your circuitry and that relays it through to this nice little interface little computer interface so getting a little bit fancy but that's basically going to go in that square cut out there that you can see i've just mocked it up so that's going to go into there and fit neatly inside there now i've got something special coming in here and i'll show you that at the end of the video when i've actually finalized the box so just to set that off quite nicely i'm also adding in a set of power points in the corner the other side of things is i'm when it comes to practicality i like simple work surfaces so for me a tailgate on a vehicle um, is this is the ultimate work surface. If I want to make a cup of coffee, pour a rum and coke, you name it, I want to be able to use it here. Now, this tub doesn't allow me to do that. Most tubs come with a whole bunch of like uh, raised edges and it's not smooth on the back. So what I've done with this is simply got hardwood um, ply or ply board um, and that is going to get attached like that. Keep things simple, um, always work. So I've got simple boxes, I've got access. If I pull my fridge out, I've still got a work surface here. Um, this can double up as a bait board. If I'm out fishing and I wanna do some bait, I can bait on you, I can wash this down. I've got my deck wash pump right here. Literally, I can hose this down. So that's getting a nice sealed layer on it. It's hardwood, I'm gonna be able to clean that the same way that you clean an old wooden breadboard at home cut onto that, put a hot pot down. So all those things you've got to think of. What works really well is stainless steel. Um, because I've got a bit of wood um, in the vehicle, um, I love wood grain and so on. So that's going to get that in the plain wood. And I can always change this out. You know, if it's damaged in two years time or three years time, I can change this out. Let's sneak around to the side of the car and I'll show you the more intricate part is where my kitchen and pantry setup is coming. Righto, so still a massive work in progress and what takes time is trying to figure out what goes where. So for me, the main thing is based off of the fridge. Okay, so I've got an upright little fridge coming in here. Now the guys from Bushman sent us through the dimensions. So we've just worked off the dimensions. I'm still waiting for the fridge. Touch wood, it gets you soon. But um, basically the fridge will come in there and will open up that way. The other thing which is very important to talk about when it comes to refrigeration is venting or cooling or allowing venting or air vent for the fridge. So what I am going to be doing is wiring in a 12 volt fan, which is wired to the same fan circuit on the fridge. So when the fridge is on, the fan will um, switch on and actually extract the heat from the fridge out of the box that we're putting it into. So uh, fridges are only as efficient as the amount of cooling that they can do. Because they create heat when they cool, you need to move that heat. The other thing is I've got this little hatch over here, now and there. Now what this is, this is an access hatch to my water plumbing fitting taps, my water pump and my compressors. And I've gone and cut through, I'll pull it up like that. I've gone and cut a little um, slot out there and this is actually gonna get a nice steel grid mesh just to finish it off neatly so it can vent for the compressors. 
Um, having three compressors, that's going to get super hot in there. And I also want that to come out. Um, just so that it be that we restrict it to the edge of the canopy. So the fridge has to start at the top edge. And I've got about 150 mil, almost 200 mil, um, like little shelf on the front end. So it kind of worked out really, really well um, on that side of things. Now, from the fridge, yes, my pantry. So Bush Company cut reset. Now, this is my old cut reset. I've had this for years. So it's got everything and it's a bit of a mess right now, but that's got all my cups, plates, glasses, knives, forks, etc. Um, that can fold down nicely. I can have my stubby coolers there, uh, tea towels, um, you name it. Then what I, the other thing which I use a lot of is, and I found it fairly recently, is a little uh, cooker, a jet boil cooker. So this, um, this runs my hot water. So the spacing, I space that back panel, panel far enough to the back that I can fit my big jet cooker cooker in the corner here. This is gonna get a shelf in and a little shelf in a corner pantry, I'll show you a bit later. And that is my day use pantry and my often used goods. My main food is gonna be underneath the back where the weight is, but my go-tos, tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, your um, salt, pepper, spices, oil. Oil is a pain um, when you go camping and a lot of bottles you buy don't seal. So I decant oil into a 500 ml water bottle with a normal screw lid. So it doesn't leak, a plastic water bottle. So my oil will be in there, chips and bickies, things that can break, maybe a couple of bread rolls for the day, and my tea and coffee. So that's the pantry there. On top here, I still have space. Um, this is my cooker. Now, cookers, I haven't based it around one cooker. I went to the shops and I measured about three or four different gas cookers up. So Coleman gas cookers, you name it. There's a whole bunch out there. This is my one I use, like a big pan. Um, it just takes a little cassette gas bottle. But this space on the top will not just be able to take one style, so I'm not restricting myself to the future, but it will accommodate literally like 70% of gas cookers. So don't restrict yourself. It's a bit of a tip. Don't restrict yourself to have everything perfect. Bit of excess space. I can still store some things up there, maybe some toilet tissue or something up at the top there. Um, in the corner against the fridge on that side. So I'm going to be having the water fillers coming up from the bottom of the tanks. So I can actually fill up my tanks from this corner, as well as my inverter for my 240 volts. So I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not planning on running coffee machines or ice makers or anything, um, but I'll be putting about a thousand watt inverter in just to do all the charging and stuff that I might need while I'm out there. So nice little bit of storage I still have in that front corner, and we'll get a better view of that um, later on of the build when I get a few more things in there. Well, I'm going to carry on cracking on with this. I've probably got, I'd be guessing, about another two days worth of work at least. The water tanks are almost here, and they'll be in the next day or two, as well as the fridge, and then I can actually finalize it, and hopefully my fridge dimensions fit it perfectly in with the box that I've already made. So let's hold thumbs. Right, guys, well, we're back in it. Now, to give you some perspective, it wasn't just two days later. This is now about a month and a half after the build has actually been completed. Now, I've already used it to Fraser Island over our Christmas holidays, and there's virtually nothing, well, there's nothing on the build that I would want to change. It's worked out a treat. Let me run through the final with you so you can see what it's all got in it. So, basically showing this is the ladder mount attached there as well as the table. Now, I've taken these two bungee cords just as elasticated cords to hold in the table and, um, and the ladder mounts over there. On the right hand side, the gun box is completed and fully carpeted. It's got two compression locks, which is at least lockable for storing, um, you know, whether it's the rifles or fishing gear, probably fishing reels, GPS, or just a good place to lock away a laptop as well. Um, in that, I've attached a light and I've got a little gas strut. So when you undo the latches, it actually will open up itself. Really, really neat. Now on the side of the box over here, a few of these attachment points. Now, these guys are great. You can actually um, push them in and you can adjust them up and down and super easy to attach um, bungee cords or hockey straps onto to strap things against the side, big boxes and bulky goods. Now, in the side here, I've gone with my fridge sitting underneath the deck and that shows you that's a 60, 60 liter fridge as well as my Pioneer boxes in there. Now I've moved my recovery gear to the left hand side, giving me a little bit more space. And um, just to show you how effective it is, I've got the deck wash pump all wired up. This is great. This is from the Marine shop, deck wash pump, switch button on there, 
perfect. I mean, we, we hosed the kids down with this over Chrissy. We had showers with this pump. It is so great. I even used it to run fresh water through my boat engines um, after being on Fraser. So absolutely great. That just tucks in the top there. Now, if you don't know it yet, I've got a massive thing for great pieces of timber. Um, now, the back has been laid, varnished, and has been an absolute fantastic work surface. I literally do virtually everything on here. Custom table, same thing. Bit of plywood knocked together, this beautiful custom frame. Just literally take this little aluminium flat bar, slide it sideways, and gas strut assisted. I've got a really nice, simple, um, work table. I can use this, I can put a hot pot on there, it works so well for my camping setup and that just tucks away neatly, only 35 mil thick, tucks away neatly there. Now as far as timber goes, like I said, I've really done one or two really unique things on the build and this for me is a, a, it's, it's a bit special. So this is Tasmanian myrtle and it's actually a wooden veneer that's been laid on top of a thin piece of ply. Um, glued on there and vacuumed tight so really good we did about four layers of varnish just to dress it up and i've inlaid the Sarmarine battery monitor system which also has got my twin water tank levels in them so i had to calibrate the water tank levels to suit the 150 liter as well as the 50 liter water tank so it shows me both of those and my voltage on the rear here attach a simple power outlet with a sig socket and a twin usb so we can charge two mobile devices at one time. Now, getting onto the kitchen and the pantry side of the vehicle. Now, come and have a look at this. This came up an absolute treat. We've got LED lights on the top in the amber and in the white light there. Amber, great for the bugs. Right on top, just a few bungee str um, or straps, elasticated cord again, that just holds my cooker into place up there, as well as on that side for the gas bottles. Carpeted everything, just giving it a beautiful finish in marine carpeting. Um, carpeted the shelf as well, so plenty of storage. Now, our Bush Company dining set, the canopy dining set is there. And this is my old one. I've had this one probably for literally about eight years, so it gets used a lot, all of our bits and pieces inside. And something a little bit unique, the bar. So, I'm a big fan of a good whiskey at night and even a bigger fan of a good rum and coke. So that's all laid out. I have the wife's cocktail mixes as well and a bit of bitters. Now that is all individually separated so the bottles cannot clank together. They are all in the individual space keeping it all secure. Nice and out of the way, you don't even know it's there. There's still a little bit of a work surface here so I find when coming to pour a drink, easy you lay a drink over there, you can pour it and mix it right here. Now the same Tasmanian myrtle veneer that we've used there, I've actually veneered the entire face of the Bushman fridge and we've stuck that on there. So a little Bushman upright fridge over there. Um, there you go, it's a 65 litre, fully laid in. It's got a few bits and pieces in. I've got some good steak in there at the moment and a few drinks, but works really, really well. Small freezer on these, but you know, for the odd ice cream, bit of ice cream and so on, for the kids, it's, it's, it just works a treat. Really good little weekend usage. Now. As far as below the fridge goes, where the three compressors sit underneath here, I decided to make that lift up and come open. And we've attached this grid, I don't know if you can see it, we've attached that grid in there for breathability. Compressors get extremely hot when pumping tires. So the theory is that at least they can vent and can breathe through that, which is really, really neat um, as well. So that pops out. Now the big thing is with the water tanks, I also have an additional pipe which comes out. Now my big pump or my, um, my basically deck wash pump that I've used actually has got it. We've got a tap on the inside there and we've got an additional tap or stop cock valve over there. I can suck water out of a creek or out of a riverbed into my big tank only. So I've got a dedicated 50 liter fresh water tank as well as a 150 liter dedicated general use tank. So that's for washing dishes, having showers, cleaning up and I can fill that via an attachment of a hose in here to a creek bed and it'll actually self-prime, suck up and push in there. So just an additional um, valve I've put in there to secure that. Then as far as our fresh water goes, 
I found this little galley pump. Now these are the same little galley pumps you get on boats, yachts, and so on. Really, really simple. I got a little switch there. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. What I found is I never had that through a second switch. So by accident, I bumped this one day while trying to pump my tires and I put the water on and it actually spilled in here. So I have added in a second little switch. That was the only modification I've done after the build. A second little switch there, switch that on, and then the galley pump works. Beautiful, fresh water, easy to get to. You can put the glass in there and so on. So switch that off. Now, all of the um, air compressors are wired up to the top here. And I've actually got my air compressor valve pumped to the top end. What that allows me to do is take up my hose and I've got the ALB um, air pump and system over there. Really simple. I can take this, I can plug it in on top and it doesn't get dirty. It's not on the outside of the vehicle where it gets full of mud and sand. Very simply, pop on my air lines there and all three compressors kick in. I can then pump up my tire. Now, this pipe is long enough to pump up my boat's wheels as well. So I have probably got about a six meter reach on this, which is really, really handy. So I'll just switch that off, let release the air out of it. There we go. And I found just a really simple place to store this whole thing um, and the airline. Bearing in mind, I do go on the beach a fair bit, so I do tend to pump tires a lot. And so that just tucks in and neatly away there. My inverter is attached to the side there. Easy plug in um, and charge up my GoPros and cameras. I generally store the batteries down the bottom here. And in the side here as well are my filler caps. Now, filler caps, clear piping, really simple. I can easily just undo these like so. Take the hose at home and I can literally push the hose down there, fill that up. At the same time, I have got a visual aid, not just the electronic, but a visual aid of the pipes inside you. So I can see when the water's filled the tanks and it's pushing back up the pipes. Now, an additional breather runs through the back end of the wall and runs through the top to allow the tanks to breathe. You have to be able to let air out when you're forcing water in so that there's space for it to go. The tank doesn't just expand and pop effectively. So I've got my breathers attached as well. That pretty much sums up the build on the rear of the vehicle as far as the tub goes. Um, a little bit of storage up the top there. I've got my fire lighters at the top and I do also attach my foldable wash up um, trough or wash bowl, if you want to call it, gets shoved in the top there. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the few unique things on this build. Um, really wanted to make it my own. The bar, just the layout, and with the extra wood grain in there for a bit of difference, bringing in all the metal work that I do, just bringing in a different pitch. But hope you enjoyed watching this build video. I know it's been a long one, and stay tuned. We've got some more episodes and more videos coming out of the build of my 79 series Land Cruiser.